Hello, my name is Sarah Caffey, and today I will be presenting my micro lesson that I created for the Micro Masters in Instructional Design and Technology at the University of Maryland Global Campus. I'd like to begin today by talking about my instructional design document. So the instructional design document, it is a blueprint. It is a blueprint for my course, and the purpose of this document is to make sure that there is a goal that everyone on the team is aiming for. Therefore, people will not be wasting their time or energy or resources working on something that is not aligned to this document. This document serves as kind of that North Star for your subject matter experts, your instructional designers, your multimedia and content creators, your editors, your project managers. While I was a team of one for this course, I could see scaling this course further and really presenting this document as something that my team can use and I can divide up responsibilities among the team by really sticking to what are our objectives, specifically our terminal objective and those enhancing objectives, who is our audience, what are their learning gaps, and then what material are we creating that follows their needs. So I want to just briefly show you my instructional design document focusing specifically on the course that I created. My course is titled Effective Co-Teaching in the Virtual School Classroom, Grades 4 through 12. And the gap that I noticed for my learners was many teachers in their education careers um, are expected to co-teach with either a special education teacher or a general education teacher. Um, and in my target audience, I specifically wanted to focus on teachers who are te co-teaching, but also doing that virtually. Because I've noticed um, in my role as an assistant principal of a virtual school that some teachers have co-teaching experience, but many teachers don't have co-teaching experience virtually. And how do you apply the six models of co-teaching? How do you apply building a partnership with your co-teacher when you do not see that person one-on-one um, -on -one in person every day and when your students are at a screen? On top of that, many teachers just do not get sufficient professional development and training in this topic because schools are under-resourced or they can't afford to send teachers to a training or have people take time off because co-teaching consultants and trainers can be expensive. So I really wanted to create a course that schools and teachers, both in person and virtually, could utilize quickly. Talking about my terminal learning objective, by the end of the course, learners are going to create a co-teaching plan with their partner teacher that will allow them to develop an effective co-teaching partnership and implement impactful co-teaching strategies. My summative assessment for this course that teachers will be working on each week aligned to the weekly objectives is creating that plan. In my instructional design document, I also highlight the variety of instructional strategies, whether that is watching videos, engaging in scenario analysis, taking self-grading multiple choice assessments, um, engaging in discussions, working with their co-teacher on a co-teaching plan, um, or reading, listening to podcasts. So I outlined some of those strategies, and if I were working with a team, um, I could talk about and further deve develop more robust activities um, designed by content creators and graphic designers and people who just have a lot more technology skill than I might have at this current point in my career. I also outlined different assessment strategies and how the most authentic assessment that I have is the co-teaching plan that teachers will be creating. To create my course, I am using RISE 360 and therefore I am using rapid e-learning design. However, I'm also using the Dick and Carey model because it was very important to me to know who my learners are and really have that front-loaded analysis of my learners to make sure that the instruction is focused to their needs. My document also contains the different materials that I will be using and that I created along with my checklists. And it concludes with my self-assessment of my lesson. I would now like to take you through the rubric for this course um, that I am taking, that I'm creating this micro lesson for, and show you how each of the components of this course are evident in my lesson.
On my website, I have the published lesson. I used Rise360. I do have a trial, so unfortunately, the links that I click on throughout the lesson um, do not work in the trial version, but I will show you um, as many as I can in this short presentation. My course begins with a welcome message. My welcome message um, gives clear directions and it also gives some tips about how to sign up for the course, how to, um, what tools will be needed, including a Google account. It gives some tips for successful completion of the course and then um, how learners can get started. You can see my syllabus of the course. My syllabus contains the course title and description of outcomes. It contains course objectives. It gives my specific contact information above. It talks about the grading policy, um, the attendance and late policy, different technology proficiency, proficiencies and requirements. It gives the deadline. Um, it has an academic honesty policy. It talks about course prerequisites um, at the very beginning of the course. I also provide my learners with a schedule of instructional events. That schedule of instructional events allows them to have a detailed look at all of the assignments, um, how they're weighted, and how to access them. You can see that schedule of instructional events here. I do have two formative assessments in my course, one after week one. It gives the objectives, and then it also has that it is a 15-minute quiz. You'll notice that there are a variety of questions and each question does provide the learner's feedback, whether they get it right or wrong. Along with that, I have my second assessment under week three, again with my different objectives listed and a, a similar format. My summative assessment is the co-teaching plan. You'll notice that each week um, as part of weekly assignments, it will say co-teaching plan assignment week one, week two, week three, and then um, week four is the summative. The co-teaching plan has discussion questions each week that co-teachers will work on. They will submit their um, work to a Google form and there is a link to the rubric that teachers will be graded on as well. At the bottom, there is a lesson plan outline as well. And so you'll be able to see that this is the authentic assessment that will be graded on this rubric. I have a variety of discussions throughout my course. The discussions are beyond yes or no questions and they really follow Bloom's taxonomy and the higher order of thinking skills. Each week has a social constructivist activity. Some weeks have more than one because that co-teaching plan, they are doing it with another learner. Um, but you will see that I'll show you one sample discussion. I have one in week one and then I have a second in week three. I am using Parlay to manage discussions. You'll see my questions here. What did you think about co-teaching prior to this week? How has your thinking changed after completing this week's lessons? I give some sentence starters. And then what are three specific steps that you and your co-teacher will take to build an inclusive classroom or build parity in your relationship? And then week three has a similarly rigorous question. I created multiple images for this course. I used Canva to create the majority of these images. Um, in my week three co-teaching models, I created each of the images to visually represent what co-teaching is. You can also find these on my portfolio. Along with that, I also created an infographic, which you can see on my screen right now. In week one, I created a what is co-teaching video. And in week number four, I created a video on how to differentiate reading using ChatGPT, and this is a screencast. I came up with many different ways for my learners to be engaged, such as discussions, the co-teaching plan, a variety of videos, a variety of checks for understanding. Um, in week one, for example, I have a variety of different scenarios relating to classrooms where teachers can determine um, if it is a good or bad example of co-teaching, and I give feedback around why it is or is not. 
In terms of copyright and fair use, I created this material um, really on my own. Um, I did not use much external material at all. There is one video that I did use in week two that I found through the OER Commons, and I do give the APA citation for that video. When it comes to accessibility and UDL principles, um, each of my videos, first of all, has a has the ability for captions. And I did edit when the we captions. Think of co we will often picture two teachers in a classroom. But having two or more um, at one point I provide an audio podcast that I created. And in that audio podcast, I do provide a transcript to it. And then finally, each of my images does use alternative text. To conclude, I did a quality assurance self-assessment. I found through my self-assessment that I should adjust and have fewer tables. I should also link the privacy policies of both Google and Parlay. And then I would like to add in the future a icebreaker, um, ideally like a video introduction where each of the learners can introduce themselves to their fellow learners. Um, and I would like to get feedback on the course prior to the end of course survey, which I do have linked at the end of my course. I would say that in terms of what I would do differently um, and what adjustments I would like to make to this course, I really would like to have real footage of classrooms where teachers can watch more items in action versus just reading about them. Um, I also would like to be a little bit more efficient about my accessibility. I went back and had to add all the alternative text to pictures. I wish that I had done it as I was building out the course. Um, I would like to have a discussion every week. Right now I have it for two weeks, but I, there are discussion questions I would really like to ask for weeks two and four. Um, and then the last module needs some work. It feels a little incoherent to me. Um, and so I think that I really want to adjust and be a little bit more strategic about the lesson plan I'm having learners create um, because right now it does not feel as deep um, and as scaffolded as I would like it to. So this is my presentation of my micro lesson. Thank you very much for viewing and for your support.